All right, welcome to our scene on acetazolamide, represented by this seagull over here that has a shawl that's a mime. So a seagull with a shawl that's a mime for acetazolamide. Again, a seagull with a shawl that's a mime for acetazolamide. In this scene, we're gonna talk about the mechanism of action of acetazolamide, the clinical use, and the adverse effects. So let's begin. So acetazolamide decreases bicarb reabsorption in the PCT. Now, in this scene over here, you'll note that this seagull is standing on top of the PCT of this random nephron in the street over here. This reminds us that acetazolamide works at the PCT. And this broken bicycle over here by the collecting duct reminds us that bicarb is thereby released into the collecting duct and into the urine. And that's why acetazolamide is used to decrease the bicarb levels in the body. And how does acetazolamide do this? It does this by inhibiting carbonic anhydrase. Let's take a look over here. Here we have the car with the AND sign that's driving it. And it's got a hydrant in the back. So we'll call this the car AND hydrant. Car AND hydrant for carbonic anhydrase. And here we have the seagull, who seemed so innocent before, actually exploding the car. This helps us remember that acetazolamide inhibits carbonic anhydrase. And that's how it causes bicarb to end up in the urine. Now, in this scene, we're talking about acetazolamide. But the truth is, this same mechanism of action applies to the other carbonic anhydrous inhibitors. And we can remember that they all end in zolamide. Dorzolamide, methazolamide. All right, anyway, let's move on to clinical use. Here we have this Martian over here who's really entertained by the seagull. This Martian over here has one eye that's exploding. This is going to remind us of glaucoma. Acetazolamide and other carbonic anhydrous inhibitors are sometimes used to treat glaucoma when there's high pressure in the eye. And this is because carbonic anhydrase is actually also in the vascular tunic of the eye, and it moves bicarb from the blood into the aqueous humor. Therefore, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors can be used to prevent the transfer of bicarb into the aqueous humor in order to decrease the pressure. We also know that this Martian over here is standing on this baseball base to help us remember base or alkalosis. Acetazolamide and other carbonic anhydrase inhibitors can be used to treat metabolic alkalosis. And of course, that's because they get bicarb into the urine. Although we want to mention that acetazolamide and these other carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are actually weaker than other diuretics. So they're actually really only used in a case of alkalosis as a diuretic. This Martian over here is very high up. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are used to treat altitude sickness. And then they do this by lowering the CSF pH. This Martian over here has a brain with a blood pressure cuff on it. The brain is going to help us remember, well, someone's brain, and the blood pressure cuff for hypertension. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are used to treat idiopathic intracranial hypertension. And this is because carbonic anhydrase is found in the choroid plexus, which produces CSF, and it helps bicarb into the CSF. So inhibitors will stop this process, thus reducing the intracranial pressure. And this Martian over here is urinating, just to help us remember the urination, the alkalinization of urine. Acetazolamide and other carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are used to alkalinize the urine. For example, to prevent the stone from forming. Okay, now let's talk about adverse effects. So over here, we see they parrot over here in the T. Parrot in the T for paresthesias. In large doses, acetazolamide can cause paresthesias. We also note this big stone over here that's crushing the banana. This stone is gonna help us remember the stone, that carbonic anhydrous inhibitors promote calcium phosphate stone formation. And the banana that's being crushed is gonna help us remember hypokalemia. Bananas in our videos represent potassium, and the fact that's being crushed is gonna help us remember hypokalemia. And because of all of this, the parrot here is moaning. Oh. It's going to help us remember the ammonia toxicity. And therefore, carbonic anhydrous inhibitors are contraindicated in patients with cirrhosis. And this random surfboard over here that's popping up is going to help us remember the sulfa allergy. All right, I hope you enjoyed this scene on acetazolamide. Stay tuned for our next video and take care.